Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about whether or not Magic the Gathering is growing and what areas is it growing, what areas is it going down. So this is kind of a video response to a Twitter post by the professor saying that everything is going oh well, okay, and GP New Jersey sold out, therefore we have nothing to worry about, the numbers are going to be incredible, and the turnout will be very good. Now, even when a GP sells out, this is the a picture of the top eight. So this is what every Magic player is striving to do, is to play on a black... It's just embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I've said it enough times that I don't need to say it again, but this is the top eight. There's no cameras, there's no coverage, there's no fame. There's barely anything. There's a tablecloth on the cheapest table they could find and that is your top eight so there's no difference between this and your local fnm but there should be a difference and in the past there has been a difference when i was younger in middle school during mccadian mask they had every mccadian mask box uh, tournament pack had a commercial for Watch us on ESPN. Watch us on ESPN. It was a big deal. They were on ESPN too. And they were. So it was a nationally nationally televised Magic the Gathering tournament. And to go from there till looking at eight people on a tablecloth in an empty room where no there's no crowds, there's no cameras, there's no streaming, there's no content creation. If one alpha investment can create that much content from going to one GP, the why cannot Wizard of the Coast hire one person to do that? And the answer is they're too cheap. Uh, they're too cheap to even afford a trophy for the winner of this tournament, which then, of course, uh, supporters and fans of Wizard of the Coast will say, no, he got his trophy. You either got it or you didn't. And I think the winner would know if he got a trophy or not. Not just random people who didn't go to the event. Okay, so go back. Let's go a little bit back in time into what has happened. I think the perception of magic on Reddit, on YouTube, is very different from the reality of magic, which is like if you own a game store or if you play at your local game store. At least in my area, my two friends, my two closest friends in this, quote, community, they owned stores. They were both WPN stores. One of them had 120 people at pre-release, every single pre-release and midnight pre-release. And he could do the five sat, the five pre-releases. And they would always be at least 40 people at each of those pre-releases. FNM was 40 to 50 people a night. Every single FNM. And the standard showdown was pretty much uh, about 20 people, which was very good. Now, that's all gone. Uh, there was actually another store that I didn't like called Swords and Comics in Kingwood. And they went, they had to consolidate. So I don't know if they dropped WPN, but they, they might just have combined into one store. They used to be two separate stores. I would say that the playing Magic, um, looking from the economics of it, is very poor. And... I knew it coming into owning a store, like running an F&M, how much it would cost, would you lose money, is it a branding exercise? So in marketing, there's two types of exercises, uh, conversion, which is obviously we're trying to sell you stuff, and branding, which is how do we brand the store? If we brand the store and we attract certain members of the community who have money, then it's worth it for us to lose money today in order to make money tomorrow because our reputation will be better. FNM, from a conversion standpoint, is a net loss all the time. We have bled somewhere around $1,600 net loss from just two FNMs and a showdown, a standard showdown between the cost to run the events. So we're not WPN, meaning that I have to go out and buy these showdown packs, which is readily available to anybody who wants to buy it, right? Uh, they're not difficult to buy. You just have to go and eat the bullet and buy it. 
you can even buy the mats. You're not supposed to be able to, but there's a lot of things that are going on in YouTube right now with people opening product early, people op opening exclusive product, people op opening product that's supposed to be prize support. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going on is let's sell it to the highest bidders because they have to. So our day-to-day -day operations is magic is not profitable. On my other channel, I will display the actual numbers, which we crunched. Anime is. Anime figures is profitable. I'm surprised because the margins are much lower. The margins are 20 to 25%. But people are more willing to spend money. So it's not like they're nickel and diming you like in Magic. Like if you've ever traded someone and they tried to nickel and dime you, that doesn't happen with anime. The difference between 100 and 120 if they like the figure, they can touch the figure, they can hold the figure, and that's their favorite character. That's, you know, waifu. No problem. They will have no issues buying that figure for a little bit more than online. Magic cards, I mean, have you seen people come to your store, come to a store, and say, mm, no, TCG player has this for 50 cents less, so I'm going to not buy from this store that I play every week at so I can buy it. That's not good. Uh, that's not good at all. So back to Tularean Community College. He is sponsored by Channel Fireball. They fly him to these events. So he's not going to say bad things about these events. And he is sponsored by Card Kingdom. Card Kingdom is trying to sell, unless you are in Seattle and local to Seattle, Card Kingdom is not your local game store. In fact, they are very far away from Texas. So a lot of times people will be selling collections to me and they will say, oh, Card Kingdom this, Card Kingdom that. And I just say, hey, just sell it Card Kingdom if you don't want to, if you don't want to cash today for a reasonable price, go ahead and sell. You know how many people, I had eight people approach me in the month of January to tell me that they were wanting to sell various conditions of the collector's editions. Some of them had bent corners, not bent, like cut the corner. Apparently, Collector's Edition has, I, I actually don't own any Collector's Edition. It has one square corner, but a lot of people actually, um, I guess they take a knife or something or scissors and they cut the square corner to make it round, which then Card Kingdom won't buy. So they're trying to sell it to me for what Card Kingdom would pay, which they actually aren't going to pay because I received an email saying they're not going to pay any amount of money for because it is damaged and they won't even pay damage on Collector's Edition. But that's just like, you know, the business, right? Business. If you're going to sell any valuable magic collection or any magic collection, you're going to look at Card Kingdom, you're going to look at TCG Player, and that's going to be the price point you want to sell at, but that's not realistic for a smaller game store. It's the margins are not there. And I think it comes down to there's too many other better things. Like Wizard of Coast Store, Mythic Editions, it's just better. It's just better than buying from your local game store. Because your local game sto store doesn't have eight Mythic Planeswalkers they can guarantee and for some more packs for and free shipping for $250. It, it cannot offer you that. Your local game store cannot offer that to you. They can also not offer you the lowest price on Ultimate Masters or Booster Boxes because Sports & More, which I believe is a distributor acting as a local game store, they will always be cheaper than you. They will always be cheaper because I they're, they're selling at a loss. They, they're selling at a price lower than the price you are buying at. So there you go. Magic is MTG Arena or bust. Um, it truly is. And I can't wait until if they port it over the Mac system. I may or may not buy a... I may or may not buy an actual... Ooh, I hate to say this, PC, non-Mac, just to play it and stream it because it is the future. Everyone knows. The Mana Source, even if the Mana Source knows something, he's always the kid who's the last one to find out about like something. And even if he knows about this and he's streaming on Twitch and that's what everyone's doing now, even Hearthstone players, then it's pretty much, you know, the writing is on the wall and that is the end conclusion. So... I really did enjoy Magic, uh, and Magic has changed a lot, and this whole Magic is dying. It won't die. It's just going to change, and it should change. 
Uh, Pokemon, for instance, is mostly played online. But people like collecting the cards, and the cards are much cheaper because people don't need the physical cards to play because most of the play goes online. But it's really smart how they did it because you need, I mean, you can grind, yes, or you can buy packs, which feeds Matt, uh, Pokemon, that Pokemon profit, that's profit for Nintendo. And then you can get codes, and then you can open cards. So, like, grinding for a pack online is really hard. You have to play like 10 games to get like enough coins or I can just spend $4 and buy a pack at Walmart or $3. They're actually on sale now. $3 and 33 cents, buy a pack at Walmart, open it. Oh, here's the code. I don't need to grind for two hours to get my pack. At the end of the day, uh, magic is going to be digital. I, you know, it's not going to be magic online. Let me just tell you magic online is dead. It's D I E. D-E-A-D, dead, completely. And anyone telling you that we should invest in it is a scammer trying to sell you their Magic Online collection or a robot. Now, I would say fully invest in MTG Arena. I'm going to make a commitment this time. I'm going to hold out a little bit longer and hope that they make an iPad version or a mobile version. There was news that the mobile version would be different. That's what I'm holding out for if the mobile version is different, i.e. the collections don't, aren't shared, then obviously I'm just going to invest in a mobile version and not worry about the MTG Arena version. If they were two different versions, which a contractor said they were and then later deleted, I think I can believe that because if it was just some BS, he wouldn't delete it as fast as he did. I think he, as soon as he posted it, he instantaneously realized that, oh, this is bad. You know, I could get sued. Let me delete it. And that's when people's motives are probably the most clean uh, is when they are ready to get, they, they believe they're going to get sued. And then they behave and act like they actually, it tells you a lot. So to end the go, to end this story, um, I don't think local game stores will support Magic the Gathering in the next five, 10 years. And no matter how much Tolarian says that, Tolarian, remember, is promoting an online store for the majority of the people. 99.9% .9 of the people who watch this video have never been to Card Kingdom, the actual store. So, yeah, when he's promoting Card Kingdom, when they're promoting TCG Player, which I can make a whole nother video about, when they're promoting Channel Fireball, they're not promoting your local game store. Your local game store is not named any of those. So, eventually, it will die out. Because Channel Fireball doesn't have to operate electricity, water, pay an employee, pay a judge, you know, have the potential for loss, have the potential for people to be injured on site, have you know any of the liabilities a local game store has when it ha holds holds an F and M. F and Ms are not profitable because pe players expect all the money to go into a payout. And even if your margins are good. So it's really fascinating. Anime and Pokemon are profitable, but it's because Pokemon players don't actually play the physical game. They just buy these packs to either get codes or get cards for their collections. So Pokemon players are more about collections. Therefore, they don't care that there's a space to play in because they're not going to play in anyway. Magic players don't buy anything and they expect you to have a space for them. That is the worst type of business, right? When you have non-consumer customers demanding services from your business. Yeah, that's bad. And anime figures, I mean, they spend a on average. So I guess take the time average how long they spend. A Pokemon collector will order the cards online. They'll pick them up and they're gone. A... Anime figure collector will, you know, examine the figure, maybe take maybe 15 to 20 minutes and then either buy it or not buy it, but they'll be gone. And they, they will ask for questions online. So they, they pretty much are committed once they come in. A Magic the Gathering player, he's going to bring his own food. He's going to bring his own Chipotle. He'll sit there for 8 to 10 to 12 hours, not buying anything. He'll buy, you know, drinks from like the Chipotle and he'll like expect there to be wi-fi he'll expect there to be good tv on he'll expect there to be the game on and cable and 
So the expectations of a Magic player are just so different from someone who's coming in just to buy an anime figure and going, or someone buying a, a bundle of Pokemon cards. They expect to, because Wizard of Coast tells them that stores have to do this to be WPN. I'm not going to do that because you will bleed, and I have bled money for a month. We've lost over $1,600, and it's... You know, it's because of people like Tolarian who set a standard that's too high to achieve with the current demographic. Anyway, bye guys.